In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good people, we continue with the, the ninth day with the reflection for this novena. It is Thursday, the ninth day of June, and we are on the ninth day. Aha. Uh -huh. I said that this novena is so well set. Uh, the day of the month is the day of the novena. Allah. That is sounds so very good. So I am a good man. I know how to time. Ah, yeah. So uh, <laughs> We are continuing with the barriers. What will make our prayer life difficult? And one of them is, uh, we have discussed the others. The other one is motives barrier. Motives barrier. When you pray, gracious ladies, what is your intentionality for praying for your husband? I did say, uh, as I was introducing, the reason why I want us to do this is because, one, it's a privilege for you. And number two, you exercise your ministry as an intercessor. And number three, and this could be the most important thing, that you become well-grounded spiritually. Did you know, the more you pray for your husband, the more grounded spiritually you will be. There is something about it in your life. In your life, you do well. It is, it is working on your, on, on, your, on your side and on your spirituality. So what is the motive? You see, James 4.3 says, Yet, even when you pray, your prayers are not answered because you pray just for selfish reasons. When we pray, for selfish reasons, then our prayers are not answered. And this is a barrier that we must work on. Now, uh, be, before I go to the other, to the other um, barrier, when I talked about righteousness, there was another aspect I didn't mention. I talked about two. The first one, which I talked about, is when we are spiritually conflicted. Now, the second one is the... Is the um, the question of the attitude. When you feel that you are too holy to interact with the sinners, I call this spiritual terrorism. When you feel that you, you are well spiritually encountered, your husband is just a, a sown sinner. And you, when you see him, you see the devil himself. At that point, it becomes difficult, and I have said this in the past, it becomes difficult for you to pray for somebody whom you do not like. Sometimes we hate people for whatever reasons. When you hate people, you cannot pray for them. Hatred for your husband will not make you pray for him. Now, if you feel that spiritually you are more mature, spiritually you are more deeply rooted, uh, rooted, spiritually you are more established, and that your husband is just a weakling spiritually, you can't pray for him, that becomes a barrier on the other side of righteousness. The other part is, um, the other barrier is relationships barrier. Now, we say that our prayers will be hindered when our relationships are not right. You see, there can be no powerful, effective prayer as long as we are not in right relationships. Jesus tells us in Matthew 5, before we worship, we must first make peace with the person who is we are angry with. 1 Peter 3, 7 says, a husband should be thoughtful of his wife. Then nothing will stand in the way of your prayers. What is your relationship with your husband? I, then on your side, are you in the right relationships? I talk about it here in two ways. Maybe your husband has really hurt you and you are feeling so bad about him. So your relationship with him is just bad. You are bitter, you are angry, and you are vengeful. That becomes an, a barrier for you to pray for your husband. The other part is when you yourself 
are in some relationships that are not holy at all. And I talk about those of you who may be in some cults, cults, cultic worship. A cult that has taught you to believe that uh, the greatest enemy of your life is your husband. Again, you cannot turn and start praying for him. You won't pray for someone whom you have been told is your greatest enemy and that, and that uh, your life is only happy when that person is not there. The other barrier is the persistence barrier. And this has everything to do with giving up. On Tuesday, no, on Monday, no. Yeah, on Monday, a lady called me and asked me, Father, I want you to tell me and kindly guide me on how I should pray because I think I have done all the things I should have done. I have done everything. Everything I have done. And I told her, you know, but Father, I have done this for many years. And the more I do it, the more he is becoming worse. Father, I have given up. And she told me, if this prayer is to be done, it is you to pray for my marriage. And I told her, my dear, I will pray for you. But please don't give up. Because it is not your prayer that was changing your husband. It is Jesus who does that at his own time. In his own time. In the time of God, our husbands are transformed and changed. In the time of God, our marriages are restored. In the time of God, our marriages are healed. In the time of God, our divisions are healed. In the time of God, in the time of God, persistence is key. Don't ask me, Father, for how long will I pray for somebody who should have known better? You will pray until thy kingdom come. When you go to God, you didn't go to God with a, with a script, with the timelines, strict timelines. No. You didn't have a contract with God that you pray for your husband for three years and after three years, he will be a saint. No. Some of you, you pray for your partners maybe until you die. Maybe. Before they become what God meant them to be. But please never give up. And as I told you, you are actually not praying for your husband to be what you want him to be. Pray and tell God, may my husband become what is in your high, in your mind, in your mind, and in your heart. What is in the mind of God for your husband? Pray for that to be manifested. Not what you want him to become. Maybe what you want him to become, you are becoming selfish. Maybe you want him to be as forgiving as you are. You want him to be as stay at home as you. You want him to be as quiet as you. You want him to be this like you. You want him to be this like you. You want him to be this like you. That is a selfish prayer. When you pray, tell God, this is your son. I offer him in prayers. Please, my father, let your son, my husband, who is my husband, to become what is in your heart. I love that. And I stop there. May the Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do have a productive Thursday.